Welcome to the Guerrero-Jean Lab webinar series, a set of videos designed to improve communication between researchers and participants, as well as connect with and educate families affected by the 16P 12.2 deletion. The overarching goal of this research lab is to discover and characterize genetic changes like deletions, duplications, and other mutations in your genes that contribute to neurodevelopmental disorders such as autism, intellectual disability, schizophrenia, epilepsy, and congenital malformation. Basically, we want to understand how genes affect mental and behavioral disorders. Let's begin by talking about the specific project, how and why we're doing this research on the 16P12.2 chromosomal deletion. The 16P12.2 deletion is a deletion of DNA on the short arm of the 16th chromosome at a specific position that results in the absence of multiple genes. This can be a deletion of around seven genes, because individuals that are missing these genes generally demonstrate neurodevelopmental disorders in varying severity, along with developmental delay and behavioral problems, it's likely these missing genes serve an important role in our body. Without them, diseases and disorders occur. Children and families carrying the 16P 12.2 deletion are participating in our study so we can learn more about the clinical variability associated with this disorder. In this case, the words clinical variability mean that people tested and found to have this deletion in their genome exhibit a wide variety of symptoms. The phenotype of this deletion can manifest itself in so many ways. This can make diagnosis, clinical prognosis, and genetic counseling very difficult. While some affected individuals have similar sets of symptoms, not everyone with a deletion has the same health and developmental issues, which poses the question, what could cause these differences if underneath they all have the same genetic error? Neurodevelopmental disorders with underlying genomic causes are known to present themselves with wide phenotypic variability. Previous studies and research conducted by Santosh demonstrated first that this specific chromosomal deletion is in fact associated with neurodevelopmental delay, and second, that other areas in the genome that are genetically modified or mutated are likely the cause for such clinical variability. These areas are called second hits and are likely responsible for the variety of the observed phenotypes we see in some of the 16P 12.2 patients. These secondary hits are probably on a different chromosome, but still somehow involved in the neurodevelopmental and disease pathways. We observed that those with multiple variants detected by sequencing and analysis had deficits in more domains than those and exhibited more clinical features than those with just a single variant. The outcome of the 16P 12.2 deletion in a second hit variant causes an interaction between the two erroneous genes which is worse than just an additive outcome. The affected genes are somehow interacting and causing the symptoms of the deletion to manifest it or present itself very differently among people that are affected. A main goal of this research is to search for these second hits or genetic modifiers and map the combination of such genetic variants that confer high risk for disease. We want to discover which mutations and other regions of DNA, aside from the specific 16th chromosomal deletion, may be the reason for variability in clinical presentation of symptoms and effects. In another paper, we reported that there is a large statistical increase of second hits seen in diseases with larger clinical variability, like this deletion, than those that are considered syndromic, for example, like Smith-McGinnis syndrome. This paper also reported a sex bias in terms of transmission of genetic variants. Females are more likely to transmit secondary variants, but boys are more susceptible to the effects of large variants and de novo effects, or mutations that arise in an individual without being passed on by a parent. Older research also supported the theory that variability of clinical features, even in individuals with the same rare CNV, can be explained by other interacting genes, which parent passed on the mutation to the child, and environmental effects that could also play a factor in the presentation and severity of disease. It's noted that children with two or more of these variants, even ones with unknown significance, were eight times as likely to be classified as having developmental delay when compared to those children that did not possess such variants. With our current research, it's helpful to study large families. This allows us to, one, see how this deletion is segregated with the disease and how it appears through generations, 
and two, to gather information that lets us see the large spectrum of this deletion's phenotypic effects. This will help us identify how the 16p12.2 deletion is involved in disease and disorder and further how other genes are potentially involved. By making connections between all the data we gather, we can try to understand the clinical and phenotypic variability we see and the mechanism by which our genes are involved. Then, we can better characterize the 16p12.2 deletion by itself so we know what can be attributed to other genetic variants and mutations. What do we need to do this research? Well, we incorporate analysis of genetic data against clinical data, like medical records and clinical questionnaires. The genetic data we're talking about here consists of information that comes from sequencing your DNA. This data consists of millions of letters that stand for different building blocks of DNA. DNA sequencing is the newest genetic technology. It's expensive, but it contains all the information regarding your health, as well as susceptibility and causes of disease. We use a technique called whole genome sequencing, or WGS, which determines the complete comprehensive DNA sequence of an individual's genome by sequencing a blood sample. WGS therefore allows for a large comprehensive discovery of variants in someone's DNA. These variants could consist of single nucleotide variants, or SNVs, in which just one letter is mutated or erroneous. With over 3 billion other base pairs in your DNA, this may seem like not a big deal, but these tiny little changes in your DNA pattern can have huge effects, which is why it's important to identify them. These variants could also consist of indels, or insertions and deletions of segments of DNA that are placed where they're not supposed to be or removed from important areas. And lastly, these variants may be CNVs, or copy number variants. This basically means that there is a variation, an increase or a decrease, in the number of copies an individual has of a certain gene. Whole genome sequencing provides us with uniform coverage of an individual's DNA and is ideal for finding the causative variants for which we're searching. We use a machine called the Illumina HiSeq X10, a very powerful tool driving current genetic research. Compared to other sequencing techniques that only analyze a limited portion of the genome, WGS is the most comprehensive method for analyzing genetic data. It provides a DNA base-by-base -base view of the genome and therefore captures the large and small variants we are looking for that otherwise might be missed. We are assessing this deletion using phenotypic data against genetic data. Phenotypic data is data that tells us about the behavioral, physical, and other symptomatic effects individuals with the deletion experience. This is why providing the records for our research use is so important. We are trying to make connections between the genetic information, or raw data about the deletion, and phenotypic data, how an individual is outwardly affected. This will allow us to prioritize variants for functional relevance, or pick which other mistakes in the genome are probably involved in the disease. This is the basis for our integrative approach to associate genotype to phenotype. Lastly, our research involves testing our possible conclusions in animal models. Selected genes that we suspect are also involved in the disease pathway, identified from WGS, are used in animal studies on flies and zebrafish. This technique is called using functional genomics in model organisms, and is possible because all living organisms have DNA. Our research culminates into a collection of experimental human genetics, bioinformatic approaches through DNA sequencing, clinical data analysis, and functional genomics, all to assess the clinical variability of this specific deletion. We are doing this research to make the lives of children with this deletion better. We want to lay a foundation to provide a better quality of life to those who suffer from genomic disorders. We can do this by uncovering the mysteries of the functional pathways involved in the disease and identifying vulnerable and effective molecular targets for therapy. Our research is the first step.